What is up everyone, it's Delt Lead, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use pre-planned burn nodes in Juno New Origins. Now, what a burn node is, is essentially a maneuver that you are setting in the future for your vehicle to accomplish automatically. It allows you to adjust the specific amount of fuel you want to burn, the time you want to burn, and what direction you want to burn your engines in. And then it shows you where your orbit is going to end up after the burn is completed so that you can make fine-tuned adjustments or lock on to a transfer orbit to a different location that you want to visit. Now, let's say that we have this uh, space probe that we are trying to put on orbit around the moon. So we need to plan out a mission to get this small vehicle from the small low Drew orbit here all the way out to the moon or Luna here. So the way we're going to accomplish this is first we're going to select Luna as a target. Now what this does for us is it shows us our closest point of approach relative to that target. So right now our closest point of approach is uh, basically the point in the orbit where we are directly underneath the moon and it shows us our relative velocity, how long until we're going to be at that point and how far away we will be from the moon. It also shows us where the uh, target will be uh, at that time as well. So you see it moves slightly forward and we'll be there when we make our next orbit. We'll end up right here and that'll be our closest point of approach on this orbit. Now in order to get to the moon we need to raise up our orbit in order to intercept the moon's orbit as it travels along this path. So what we're going to do is create a burn node. Now if I hover my mouse over the blue line that indicates our craft's orbit you'll see this little plus sign and if I click on my orbit it will give me a window to uh, do a lot of different things. Now, the ones we're going to be looking at right now are planned burns, so these first uh, category of options. We can burn at the location I click. So if I click right here, and I can click plan burn here, and it'll add a burn maneuver at that exact point in the orbit. Or I can click uh, planned burn at periapsis, which will automatically place a burn right at our periapsis, which is the closest point in our orbit to the body that we're currently orbiting. Uh, similarly, we can do it at apoapsis, which is the highest point in our orbit. So right now, our orbit is 121 kilometers at its lowest point and 125 kilometers at its highest point. So by clicking apoapsis, I put it right at that high point, that top of the arc. I can also put it at my ascending and descending nodes. Now, we'll talk about ascending and descending nodes here in a bit, but for now, we're going to just line up at periapsis, place a burn there, and you'll see the planned burn tool down here in the right corner uh, with these green, red, and blue icons, and then similar green, red, and blue icons on uh, my burn node. Now, what each of these means is the vector that you're going to burn your engines in. Uh, the green icons indicate prograde and retrograde. The blue icons indicate radially out and radially in. And the red icons indicate normal and anti-normal. So uh, prograde and retrograde are probably the simplest to explain. Uh, prograde is the direction you are currently moving in. So it's the direction we're going. So if I burn prograde, that means I'm going to go faster. And it shows me my delta V, my change in velocity. So this burn, I will go 520 meters per second faster uh, in the direction that we're currently traveling in, and zero, uh, zero meters per second faster in the other two directions. And you can see as I go faster, then my arc is higher, and I get to a higher point in my orbit. So what we're going to use is this prograde burn. We're going to drag this slider, and that's going to push our orbit way out. And you can see as my orbit gets bigger, as I travel along this orbit, you can see exactly where the moon will be at that point in the orbit. See, I, I've got all my approach info right there. Now, my closest point of approach right now is here. So what I need to do is just keep increasing my orbit, and then you see we have ourselves a intercept. We are encountering the moon here. We're following into its sphere of influence, and we have this new orbit line that indicates where we will be relative to the moon. Now, that's pretty good on its own. But what we want to do is get into a uh, closer orbit to the moon. So as you can see, we're still uh, at this orbit, 2,910 kilometers above the surface of the moon. We want to get down closer to the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here on my encounter so I can see it well. 
and I'm going to use the uh, icons down here to make small adjustments just by clicking on the uh, icons. And you can see every click actually changes the orbit by a lot. I'm only changing my speed by one meter per second per click, basically. And that's because my sensitivity is turned all the way up. So what we can do is turn this way down. Let's go to like 10% for now. Uh, yeah, 10% will do. And let as I click here, you see it's way less sensitive. So it lets me make more fine-tuned adjustments. Now, if I change my prograde and retrograde velocity, you see how my orbit kind of passes under the moon. And really, the closest I can get my uh, periapsis at the moon is 328 kilometers. And I really can't do much better than that because the orbit starts to rotate to the other side. So the way we bring our encounter in closer is by using our other two options here. Uh, now, for, for right now, I'm going to just leave this burn here. And we'll just have our prograde burn that puts us on this orbit uh, slightly to the right of the moon and passing underneath of it. And we're going to hit the lock node. This prevents the node from being changed or updated by anything that I'm doing. So if I mess around, it's not going to mess with my uh, burn node. Uh, another thing worth noting is you can see this purple orbit here is our final orbit after we pass the moon. So if I do nothing, after this burn, we're going to pass by the moon we're going to get kicked up and then we're going to continue on this purple arc in this much larger orbit here now it's not our final orbit but that is what would happen if we were to do nothing after that burn now the next thing we're going to do is burn at our descending node here so this blue arrow if i click here planned burn at descending node now the descending node is basically the point where our orbit crosses the the plane of the orbit of my target. So it's kind of hard to explain, but imagine if the circle that this orbit mates was a solid disk. The descending node is the point where my orbit crosses through that disk going down. And then likewise, the ascending node is the point where my orbit crosses the disk going up. Why I want to burn at the ascending and descending nodes is because that is the best time to change the inclination of my orbit. So what I'm going to use is use the radial up or normal, sorry, radial uh, radial in and out of the blue. So normal and anti-normal. You can think of normal as burning directly upwards from the orbit right here. So this red line, if I pull this up, I'm burning upwards in the orbit now. And you can see that just by doing that, I'm actually colliding with the moon. That's how close our encounter is going to be. Uh, we don't want to do that necessarily, so we're going to uh, just do a small adjustment to our retrograde velocity and get off of a collision. But now, you can see we're basically going to orbit around the equator of the moon, and our final orbit uh, does not have us in this big, uh, very highly inclined final orbit. So, from here, we're just going to fine-tune my orbit. I want to get right around the equator of the moon for this. And so what I'm going to do is turn my sensitivity way down, and I want to get nice and close. So I'm going to, oop, too close, don't want to collide, don't want to collide, but I want to be probably at about uh, 20 to 30 kilometers. Yeah, 34 kilometers is pretty good. 28 is perfect. So that'll be our periapsis right there. And then I want to get as close to a equatorial orbit, so no inclination. It's perfectly flat right about right about here all right so that is going to be our final orbit you can see it's pretty flat right at the equator and it's nice and low uh, one thing you do need to be careful of is when you adjust one of your other parameters like i adjusted the re uh, anti-normal and normal here it pushed my uh, periapsis out so i need to Make a couple more fine-tuned adjustments to that as well. Uh, 21, let's go out just a little bit. 32, that's perfect. So that'll be our final orbit. So I've locked this burn in. This second plan burn, I can't lock in because the second burn is dependent on the first burn being successful. Uh, so we have this one locked in. Now the other buttons I'm going to use here are the... Uh, toggle the auto burn. 
So this is telling the craft, hey, when we get to this point, I want you to do this maneuver. And you can see my craft already is lining up on this new vector here, the lock maneuver vector. So it is pointing in the direction that it needs to burn its engines in already. So it'll be ready to burn as soon as it gets here. And then from here, we can just click on this button, which will time warp us to the next maneuver. Automatically brings us exactly where we need to be. And then the engine's light without me having to do any input. And you can see our rocket is making its maneuver. Now we can watch here on the progress bar how much longer we have to go in the burn. It'll show us how much more fuel we need to burn. The time the burn's going to take gives us all these details. So we'll do a little time acceleration as we do our first burn into the lunar encounter orbit. And I'll slow it down as we get closer to the end here. Okay, now the program's going to go ahead and start throttling my engine down. And that is our maneuver. Now, we're probably not exactly where we wanted to be based on our maneuver where we planned it out, right? There's going to be a little bit of error every time we do one of these burns. So looking back at my orbit, I see, yep, my periapsis is a little higher than I wanted it to be. So we'll make a small correction. And boom, it is right back where I wanted it to be. So I can lock my next burn in. There is a lock symbol there telling me that it's ready to go. And I will time warp. My craft automatically snaps to the maneuver. And when the time comes, lights its engines. Now this one will be a much shorter burn. We're just burning very briefly to adjust our orbit. Uh, now that the burn's complete, we can see we are pretty much exactly where we wanted to be. So now from here, we can make our last planned burn. Now we're going to do this one at periapsis of the moon. So this is a burn that will happen during our orbit around the moon. We're going to burn retrograde, which means we're going to be slowing down. And we're going to go all the way down till we have a pretty much circular orbit. Right at about 30 kilometers. So right, right about there. It'll take 376 meters per second. It is one day away, and the burn will take 18 seconds to perform. So we will time warp to our next checkpoint, which is entering the, the lunar sphere of influence right here. And now we can, uh, come on, there we go. We can lock our burn, time warp to the burn, and our craft is pointing retrograde at exactly the right moment. Our engine's light. And we bring our orbit around Luna nice and tight. And with that, the burn is complete. We are in a very nice circular orbit. And I didn't have to use any manual controls to get from Drew's orbit to Luna's orbit. I did that all by making plan burns uh, and then just setting the parameters I wanted and hitting run and letting the program do the work for me. So now we are successfully in Luna orbit. I can deploy my payload of my Explorer probe to scan the surface of the moon. And with that, we consider the mission complete. That is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, Pre-planned burns are very useful tools. They're extremely good at planning out how you want to get around uh, and then also figuring out if I have enough fuel to make it because it shows me all the information like how much fuel it's going to cost and how long the burn's going to take. So if you're not using pre-planned burns, now you know how to use them and you definitely should be in the future because they are essential for making planned missions to other bodies. If you found this video helpful, guys, please consider liking it and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.